The first child data window type we'll touch on is used in the composite data window presentation style. The composite data window came about when developers had a need to print two or more data window objects on one physical page. As you see here, I have two child data windows in this one composite, a cross-tab data window and a graph presentation style. Now, both of these data windows are displaying sales data from the test database, but they are in this parent data window example functionally unrelated. Let's go ahead and make our first composite data window. We see that I have two candidate child data window objects open right now. In fact, at this moment in time, they are not child data windows. They are standalone, fully functional data window objects. Uh, they are just open for your sake here during this demo for preview. Here I have a pie graph presentation style open, and here is its preview with the data, and also a cross tab presentation style, and here is its preview with the data. So let's go ahead and make a new composite presentation style that assembles both of these data window objects as its children. I'll open up the new dialog, and we see that the tree view in the new dialog is already open to the data window node, and the composite presentation style is already selected. I'll click Next, and I'll accept the default name for the data window object for now. And now is my opportunity to select the one, two, or more data window objects that will be children within this composite. So here I'll choose the cross tab, as well as the pie graph presentation style. I'll click Next, and we see that that's it. And I'll click Finish. And let's go ahead and look at this new composite data window in the preview pane with its data. And we see that the data window painter has already performed two helpful tasks for us. Number one, it has auto-sized height on the second child data window, the graph, so that it is not inappropriately overlapping the perhaps column headings and the cross tab presentation style child. And it has also placed that second child data window on the top of the Z order. If I were to move this second child data window down, it might inappropriately, of course, be overlapping some of the data in the detail band of this cross tab presentation style that is the first child. And there you have it two child data windows in a single composite parent data window, not necessarily functionally related by data, and able to be printed on a single page of a printed report. The next child data window type we'll examine is the nested report. Now, nested reports can be associated with their parent functionally through the date of the parent and through the nested report's retrieval arguments. In this code example, we see a nested report being utilized. Here is the parent data window object. It is of tabular type. It's pulling rows from the department table of the test database. Here we see the single row currently visible is for department number 100 from the R&D department. Uh, the child data window, the nested report, in fact, for this row is also of tabular type presentation style. It has one retrieval argument in this case, and that is for department ID. So it is pulling all the employees for each and every department, one row of the parent data window at a time. Let's go ahead and recreate that data window with a parent and child relationship utilizing the nested report type of child data window. Here we have a data window object that is tabular in nature, and it will act as the parent data window in this case. Uh, we see from its preview that it is pulling the very few rows in this test database for departments, five in fact. And let's go ahead and look at what will act as the child data window to its parent. And right now it is a fully functional standalone data window object. In fact, pulling employees from the test database. And if we go to the preview for it, we see that it has had defined for it a single retrieval argument. In fact, for department ID. Let's go ahead and put in department 200 just for demonstration's sake, and we see that it's pulling those employees that have been assigned to department 200. So let's go ahead and define the nested report relationship. And now let's switch over to what will act as our parent data window in the data window painter. And I will increase the height of the detail band to accommodate what will be the nested report. I'll go over to the toolbox and I will drag and drop the report into that detail band. And now I'm presented with a list of possible data window objects that will act as the child. 
and I will select the D employees with args. And now that I can see the preview of the child data window object, I'll go ahead and resize its width to be able to accommodate the width of the columns themselves. Now let's go ahead and map the retrieval argument for the child data window to some data in the parent data window. We'll go over to the properties for that report, the nested report, and we'll scroll down to the retrieval arguments portion and I'll click the Browse button, and we see that Power Builder has interrogated uh, the child data window that is acting as the nested report and found just one retrieval argument. What I'm going to do then is to now assign it an expression that will supply the data that the child is looking for. And that expression in this case is simply going to be the name of the column in the parent that will supply that value. I'll click OK, click OK, close the toolbox and the property grid, and go into preview. Retrieve the data, and we see that we have that functioning nested report within the parent data window. In fact, our nested report type of child data window. Now we'll simply come over to the layout of the data window painter, and pretty it up a bit to accommodate a more pleasing presentation for this parent-child data window. Go back to preview, and there we are. The third type of child data window that we'll cover is the drop-down data window. Let's say that we want to reassign departments to each employee, and we certainly don't want to enter freeform values or allow the users to do so. We want to make sure that the user can only select from uh, those departments that have been predefined, of course. So let's say that you're familiar with edit styles of data window columns. Uh, we don't want to have an edit edit style, no freeform here. We want to be able to have a data-driven list of predefined departments. And in fact, here we have one defined for the department ID column of the parent data window. The child, in fact, is acting as a drop-down, uh, hence the name a drop-down data window. So yes, in this next demonstration, we'll see how to construct and then assign a data window object as a child, in fact, drop-down data window. And here we have a data window object that will act as our parent for this demonstration. It is of type grid presentation style. And here is a tabular presentation style data window object that will act as our child at runtime. It will simply display department values. Let me go ahead and change over to the parent, what will be the parent, and select the department ID column. Go over to the properties grid and change its edit style from edit, freeform that is, to drop down data window. And we see that the property grid has changed to accommodate the additional values that need to be assigned. In fact, let's go ahead and choose the data object that will act as the child. And we need to choose two more values. Which column in the child will act as the data column that will supply the data value to the parent? And that will be the department ID column in its result set, the child's result set. And in this case, the display column, uh, the value will be displayed by the column department ID as well. Uh, in fact, when the drop-down data window collapses back up, I do not in this case wish to display the department name. I do wish to display the department ID. So both data column and display column are supplied by the child's department ID column. So now we'll go up to the view menu item in the data window painter and choose Data Window Painter Windows, and we want to add the preview pane to this particular list of panes. And here we have uh, the parent data window displaying the values, and I'll go ahead and select the department ID column, and we see that in fact, our drop-down data window is working as expected. Uh, it is retrieving its own result set, and then supplying those values to us uh, for selection in the parent. Now, some of you may have observed that this is a fairly narrow drop-down. In fact, it's only the width of the column itself. What if we had longer values that we needed more width to accommodate? Let's go ahead and go into the uh, layout view in the Data Window Painter for the parent. 
and select the department ID column once more. Go into the properties for its edit style, and we see that the percent width is currently 100%, in other words, 100% of the parent's column. Let's say that we want to increase that by half, we'll say 150%. Save that, go back over to the preview, re-retrieve to refresh, and we see that, in fact, we do have 150% of the width of the parent column. And lastly, in this session dedicated towards child data windows, what if my data window object being utilized as a drop-down data window, child, has a retrieval argument defined for it? In fact, in this academic example, we have the user able to select from uh, the states, defined for the United States, but what if they then wish to uh, filter that table's result set for Canadian provinces? Well, I have accommodated that usage here in this academic code example. Let me choose Canada, drop the drop down data window again, and we see that we can now select from provinces. Let's examine how we did that. So here we have a data window object that will act as a child drop down data window. If we go into the design data source menu, we'll open up the SQL statement definition, and we see that yes, I have a host variable named a underscore country and the where clause. It was defined up here in the design menu item for retrieval arguments, and we see that yes, we do need a string value to be able to filter uh, that result set, to constrain that result set through the where clause. Let me close this, go into the preview for this child data window, supply the value, and then we see, yes, instead of all the states and provinces, we have instead constrained the result set to just the Canadian provinces. And switching over to the data window object that will act as the parent, we'll select the state column, go into the properties grid, and we see that it has an edit style of drop-down data window selected. And we have selected the data window object to act as the child. And we also have the data and display columns designated to both be the state ID column of the child. And if we go over to the preview for the parent data window, we'll retrieve the results set into it in the preview pane. And we see that, yes, we are being prompted for the retrieval argument value of the child data window, designated currently to be used as a drop down data window. If I supply the value for Canada, click OK. We see that it does function desirably, but of course uh, we don't wish the user to be prompted for these values at runtime. That's certainly uh, awkward and undesirable. Now the technique we're using to prevent the user from being prompted for that retrieval argument value for the child data window is to be able to pre-retrieve the drop-down data window's result set before the parent uh, does so by default. Here we see that implemented or instigated from two places in my UI. From the clicked event of this retrieve command button, we see that I'm calling a developer-defined function method of the window called OFRetrieve DDW underscore with arg, supplying it the default value of USA, just academically for this demo's sake. Going back to the layout, we also see, if you'll recall, we have that drop-down list box where I could choose between the USA and Canada, and in its selection changed event, I am also calling that same window method, but this time with the selected text of the drop-down list box. But let's go ahead now and examine that implementation of my window function, my Windows method. Within the PowerScript Painter, I'll now select functions for the window, and we'll utilize the OFRetrieve DDDW with arg method. And we see here that in order to pre-retrieve uh, the drop-down data window, child data windows results set before the parents, we need to be able to get a handle to it, a handle to the child data window. And that is accomplished by calling the getChild method. Here we have getChild a method, in fact, of the data window control that is hosting the data window object parent, and we have declared a data type of data window child. To the getChild function, we need to supply two values, uh, the name of the column 
that has the child data window in it, and pass by reference the declared variable of data window child. We then associate that data window control, the non-visual one in fact, with the database connection using the set trans object call. And then we can retrieve the result set for the child data window, the drop down data window, and in fact, as if it were any normal data window control. So, in fact, by pre retrieving the child data window's result set before the parents, uh, the user is no longer prompted for that retrieval argument value. Thank you for your time and your attention for Power Builder The Basics Child Data Windows.